bold threat from Iran after a key figure in its nuclear program is assassinated. Tehran blaming the United States and Israel for a car bomb that killed one of the regime's top nuclear scientists, vowing to, quote, persist in punishing the perpetrators and those supporting them behind the scenes. This is the third murder of an Iranian nuclear scientist in just two years. Joining me now, Texas Congressman and Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul. Congressman, thank you so much for being here. Now there is a real question about the position we're in, because there have been three guys assassinated over there. A fourth was attempted, and Iran is vowing to retaliate. They blame Israel, but they also blame us. Our Secretary of State says we had nothing to do with it. Israel saying the same. Uh, should we be doing this if it is us? And what should we do if Iran <laughs> retaliates? Well, obviously, if we're doing it, we shouldn't be doing it. But this is an act of terrorism, and we should empathize with them. They are victims of terrorism, and we have condemned all terrorism. Obviously, the Iranian government uh, wouldn't be killing their own uh, scientists. So, yeah, we should have great empathy for them. And if we haven't done it, we should prove to them or give them all the reassurance that we have not done it. And to the answer to your questions, if we are doing it and participate, we ought to quit. That wouldn't make any sense, uh, you know, participating in violent acts, which would be equivalent to terrorism at the same time, uh, that's all we talk about is going around the world on the global war on terrorism, so there'd be no consistency there. Well, now we may have a problem on our hands because if it, you know, our Secretary of State says it wasn't us, but Iran seems to believe it was us, and now they're vowing to retaliate, uh, perhaps against Israel, perhaps against us. What do we do if they assassinate a, an American in response? Well... It's a, it's a real mess. We should have done a lot less a lot sooner. Everybody knows we have CIA agents uh, maneuvering in Iran. Uh, we had a drone shot down, maybe two drones shot down over Iran. We're getting ready to put very punishing sanctions on them and disrupting the oil market. And, you know, they're a very weak nation. They have to, they're, they're responding in a natural way. But they, they don't want trouble because they know they can be annihilated in about 40 minutes, you know, either by Israel or the United States. This idea that they're looking for a fight, I think that that is all a concoction of the West, so prepare the people uh, for, for a war that's likely to come when we have a policy like this. I think it makes the perfect argument for my non-interventionist foreign policy that we shouldn't be engaged in stirring up trouble. And all these things that we do to try to get rid of the regime in, in, in Iran right now actually plays into their hands, because once we enter fear or put on sanctions, this brings the Iranian people together. They're having an election in a few months, and Ahmadinejad is not that strong politically. But when we interfere as an outsider, those dissidents who are struggling to get control of their country and their government... حالا اجازه بدید که در مورد یک موضوعی ارتباط تلفنی برقرار کردیم با آقای شیخان معاون ارتباطات دفتر رئیس جمهور. آقای شیخان سلام. بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم من هم عرض سلام دارم خدمت شما و همه بینندگان شبکه بین المللی خبر آقای شیخان شبکه بی بی سی مدعی شده که آقای رئیس جمهور در پاسخ به سوال این شبکه جمله غیر متعارف رو گفته نظر شما چیه خب این خبر رو ما کذب محض میدونیم و این مسئله رو از اساس تکسیب میکنیم این گونه اقدامات غیر حرفه‌ای و ضد اخلاقی رو ادامه کینه توزی و خبرسازی های دروغین استعمار فیر علیه دولت و ملت بزرگ ایران ما میدونیم اینان به زم خودشون در تلاشن تا موازه ضد استکباری دکتر احمدی نیجاز رئیس جمهور ملت ایران رو تحت شاه خبرسازی ها و ادعاهای کذب خودشون قرار بدن که من فکر میکنم که در واقع دست اونها برای همه مخاطبین جهانی که مسیر ادالت رو تیم میکنن رو شد بسیار خوب خیلی متشکرم آقای شیخان ما یه گزارشی هم داریم که حالا من پلی میکنم که دوستان ببینن شبکی سلطنتی بی بی سی که قبلا از گاف های متعددش که معروف ترینش پخش خبر ممنوع تصویر شدن علاق جیگر بود گفتیم این بار هم یه جورایی گاف جیگری داده این بار هم چهارمین گاف جیگریشو داد شبکه بی بی سی فارسی دیشب خبری رو با آب و تاب فرامون پخش کرده در خصوص گفتگوی یکی از خبرنگاران این شبکه 
با رئیس جمهور کشورمون این خبر از صبح امروز در فضای مجازی و شبکه های اجتماعی دهن به دهن شده و دستن در کانان بی بی سی جیگر هم حسابی دارن روی اون تبلیغات میکنن این سعی کردم ازش بپرسم که چند نفر آمدن این افراد اینجا چه میکنن و حزینش چه هست قضیه از این قرار بوده که بی بی سی مدعی شده که رئیس جمهور کشورمون که برای شرکت در نشست مجمع عمومی سازمان ملل در نیویورک به سر میبره هنگام رد شدن از یکی از گیت های امنیتی در پاسخ به سوال Do you understand me? Yes, I, I don't know what fucking planet you think I'm you're not, on right now. I'm, I'm not planning, sir. I'm here. Planning? I said planet. I said I'm said not planet. Any, yeah, I'm not That's any planet. It. It's David. Jesus Christ. This sucks. Sorry about that. I picked the wrong guy. I'll get up. Pull over five fucking feet. Do you understand me? Pull over. <laughs> I have this on video in case you want to. You have? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. In case you need to submit it to yeah. someone. Thank you so much. Yeah, send me your email, I'll send it to you. Okay. I'll, I'll give you my card. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. No, that's crazy. That's, that's really inappropriate. That's abuse of power, obviously. Because he was there. No, it's, uh, it's no, not your fault. Blinking Listen, blinking it's not your fault. Blinking. It's... Uh, this guy's just a dick. Yeah. <laughs> to put it mildly. I mean, he shouldn't be slamming your car. Or yeah, just, he shouldn't be slamming your car door. He shouldn't be he right throwing things yeah. around. He doesn't have a right to open your door. Like he's he's. I don't think he could have really arrested you. I don't. <laughs> you weren't under arrest. I think he's just on, on a power trip right now. Yeah. Because you honked at him. Because you honked. Because he he didn't have a blinker on. No. I mean, if you're gonna park, you're supposed to put your blinker on. That's the way this works. That's why I'm saying. To no, no, I know. Yeah, but you know, I know. Yeah, I, I would know. just not say anything. Don't say anything. Just, just. You're gonna quiet. be. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. That's it. Now let me tell you something. The next time you do it again, okay. You're getting your... Okay, what? You gonna let me fucking finish? Stop, I'm... Stop interrupting me. Okay. Apologize. I'm sorry. Well, who do you think you're talking to here? Sir, I'm not saying nothing. Said, no, every time I open my mouth, you have something to say. When you're driving up my ass, when I'm trying to park the car, and then you have to do something with your hands. Sir, I just say... I don't oh. care what Abdullah, Hotel, Allah, 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 Allah,